Good evening and welcome to the public hearing for the Riverside Unified School District Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics Education Center Draft Environmental Impact Report, referred to as STEM Education Center Draft EIR. My name is Stephanie Tang and I am the Environmental Planner for the University of California, Riverside. A few logistics before we start the presentation. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and is being live streamed. The recorded meeting will be provided on the UC Riverside Environmental Planning website and in the link provided in the notice of availability of the draft EIR. For those attending via live stream, you will not be able to provide verbal comments. You may send written comments to the address and email noted in the notice of availability. Should you have any technical difficulties during the meeting, you may use the chat function and technical support staff will be help, able to troubleshoot the issue. If you're attending in person and would like to provide verbal comments, you must fill out a speaker card and hand it to one of the ladies in the back at the check-in table. Please note, we are not responding to any comments at this meeting, but will be providing written comments as part of the final environmental impact report process. Each speaker will have two minutes, whether you're providing your own comments or providing comments on someone else's behalf. For those needing Spanish translation services, there are headsets at the check-in table in the back and Spanish speaking folks who will be able to assist you. Buenas tardes. Para las personas que necesitan ayuda a servicios en español, hay audífonos atrás en la entrada que pueden usar para su este placer. This project is a product of collaboration between UC Riverside and Riverside Unified School District, referred to as RUSD. The STEM Education Center project is a RUSD project, but is proposed on UC Riverside campus. I am joined tonight by Jerry Bamati, Vice Chancellor of Planning, Budget, and Administration with UC Riverside, and members of the UC Riverside STEM Center Advisory Committee. Thank you for being here and for all your work and support. I will turn it over to Boleyn to introduce the district team here with us tonight. Thank you, Stephanie. Good evening, everyone. I have the pleasure to introduce our Riverside Unified School District. In the audience, we have our board president, Mr. Dale Kinnear, board clerk, Dr. Normi Hernandez-Alexander, assistant superintendent of instruction, Dr. Daniel Sosa, Assistant Superintendent, Facilities Planning and Development, Orrin Williams, and myself, Belen Bobadilla, Interim Director, Facilities Planning and Development. I will now turn it over to Jerry Bamati for some welcoming remarks. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, and welcome to all of you to this public hearing on the STEM Center project. Um, my name is indicated Jerry Bomati. I'm Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer at UCR. This project at UCR has been a partnership with uh, Riverside Unified School District for probably about a decade now. And in fact, in 2015, there was an agreement that we would move forward uh, to provide land for the development of this project. That's really the main uh, partnership piece for the university, providing the property. The school district would be designing, developing, and operating the school that they would put on that site, which you'll hear more about, you probably know about already. Uh, it's, uh, we see it as a great partnership in helping the community have a site for a STEM center like this. Uh, certainly our university supports many STEM-related programs as well. Uh, we already get uh, graduates from the STEM high school here in Riverside coming to our university, and we would hope that maybe there would be more coming uh, in the future. And so uh, I'll turn it back over to Stephanie, but welcome to all of you. And as she indicates, this is a process that's laid out by the state, and we will give written responses later on to everybody on it. And we hope everybody has a time to give their comments, suggestions, and input on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I will now turn it over to Orrin Williams for some welcoming remarks. Uh, greetings to you all from the Riverside Unified School District. 
Uh, thank you for your interest in the district's facilities projects. Um, I'd also like to offer a special thank you to Stephanie and Annalise and Boleyn uh, for the many years of hard work on preparing this draft EIR, and so thank you very much for that. Uh, and finally, we look forward to hearing from the community and the thoughts that, uh, on the proposed project and its viability. So again, welcome and thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Oren. The agenda for tonight's meeting includes the purpose of the public hearing, a summary of the proposed STEM Education Center project, and a summary of the draft EIR analysis, followed by public comments. The purpose of this public hearing is specifically to receive comments on the draft EIR for the STEM Education Center project. This is not a meeting to discuss the project generally, so please limit your remarks on the draft EIR. As required by the California Environmental Quality Act, known as CEQA, UC Riverside and RUSD will, will respond to all comments in writing and therefore will not respond verbally to comments tonight or engage in a dialogue. The next few slides contain a brief summary of the STEM Education Center project, followed by a summary of the draft EIR analysis. The approximately 1,100-acre UC Riverside campus is located within the city of Riverside and is divided into West Campus and East Campus by the Interstate 215 and State Route 60 freeway. The project site, shown in yellow outline on this map, is located on the northern portion of UC Riverside's East Campus at the southwest corner of Canyon Crest Drive and Blaine Street. The overall project site is approximately seven acres. The proposed location of the RUSD STEM Education Center and T-Mobile cell tower relocation area is within approximately six acres of university's ownership. The proposed STEM Education Center site is currently used as open recreational fields with two baseball diamond, surface parking, and two cell towers currently leased to Sprint and T-Mobile. As part of the proposed project, the existing T-Mobile cell tower on the project site will be decommissioned, re removed from the site, and relocated to a grass area on the northern portion of the UC Riverside baseball complex. The existing Sprint cell tower on city-owned parcel of the project site is planned to be decommissioned independently of the project, and no replacement is proposed. The associated improvements area along the underground gauge canal is within the city of Riverside's ownership. Improvements will include the removal of the existing bleachers, lighting, and the baseball diamond, installation of replacement landscaping, or conditions similar to that of the existing gauge canal portion north of Blaine Street, and replacement or relocation of an existing water utility line that runs below the gauge canal. No modifications to the gauge canal itself would occur and no heavy equipment would be utilized on top of the gauge canal to complete these improvements. The electrical feeder line upgrades and sewer line extension to serve the electrical and sewer demands of the project is within the city's rights of way. The objectives of the RUSD STEM Education Center, as stated on page ES-4 in the executive summary or, or section 2.2.2 in the project description of the draft EIR, are to establish a flagship STEM education facility at a safe and secure location within the Riverside Unified School District to meet the emerging science, technology, engineering, and mathematics needs and demands of the district's service population where students can learn to grow into careers in their fields. Promote, foster, and enrich an early college environment through co-location of the STEM education facility with the research and science-based institutions such as UCR to facilitate collaboration. Improve access for approximately 1,200 RUSD students every school year to state-of-the-art STEM education facility while limiting disruption to existing district facilities. Provide a STEM site to support students in grades nine through 12 with adequate support spaces, multifunctional indoor and outdoor spaces, amenities and associated infrastructure while meeting applicable UCR and UC policies. Enhance the high school student experience by integrating in-class academic STEM curriculum with hands-on interactive practicum opportunities on campus and improve student-to-student -student collaboration. 
promote environmental and sustainability principles through efficient use of space and thoughtful building and landscape designs that integrate the, and enhance the existing neighboring communities and develop the UC Riverside East Campus in a manner compatible with the land uses identified in the UCR Long Range Development Plan. I will now turn it over to Oren to go over the proposed project. Thank you, Stephanie. The proposed project entails development of an approximately 80,000 gross square foot, three-story, approximately 50-foot tall school facility that would contain classrooms, lecture facilities, a multi-use discovery center, fabrication lab, food service, fitness center, administrative offices, outdoor learning areas, landscape hardscape, and associated site improvements. The proposed project's overall design would meet the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, known as LEED, Silver Certification. The school facility would also include a 153 space surface parking lot. The school would serve grades 9 through 12. The proposed project is expected to serve a capacity of approximately 800 students at any given time and approximately 1,200 students daily with approximately 60 faculty and staff. Approximately 400 students would be full-time students uh, at the STEM Education Center and approximately 800 students would be part-time students spending half of the school day at their RUSD home school and half of the school day at the STEM Education Center. Part-time students would be bused between their RUSD home schools and the STEM Education Center. Students in grades 9 through 12 at the RUSD's existing STEM Academy at the former Hyatt Elementary School site would be relocated to the proposed STEM Education Center while the existing STEM facility would expand and continue to serve grades 5 through 8. The STEM Education Center may occasionally be used as late as 10 p.m. for RUSD school-specific uses and activities as well as by UC Riverside. UCR anticipates the school may host two to three special events per school year as fundraisers that may take place on weekends and one to two nighttime events per month, such as back to school night. This slide shows the proposed site plan for the STEM Education Center. As shown here, the school building would be sited on the northern half of the project and the surface parking on the southern half. There would be a bus lane with ingress from Canyon Crest Drive and egress onto Blaine Street as shown by the blue arrows. The bus lane would be restricted for use by only school buses and service vehicles, including UCR vehicles. Separate passenger vehicles would be able to enter and exit the site as shown by the red arrows. This slide shows the proposed north and south building elevations with the north elevation viewed from Blaine Street and the south elevation viewed from the Falkirk Apartments. And here we see the proposed west and east building elevations with the west elevation seen from the UC Riverside Baseball Complex and the east elevation from Canyon Crest Drive. Construction activities could start no sooner than 2027, um, but the state, but the start date would be ultimately uh, contingent upon the division of the state architects, also known as the DSA, approval and the RUSD obtaining funding for this project. Construction is expected to last for approximately 32 months and would involve demolition and removal of the open recreation fields, landscape, hardscape, lighting, and parking. Temporary construction staging and laydown areas and worker parking would be within the project site as well as along Blaine Street and Canyon Crest Drive, specifically during the installation of the electrical service feeder line upgrade and the sewer line extension. And now back to Stephanie.
With that, I will turn it over to Annalise Torres, our environmental consultant, to go over the draft EIR. Thanks, Stephanie. So we'll start with an overview of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, and the purpose of an EIR. Then we will review some of the draft EIR conclusions and alternatives that were evaluated in the draft EIR. As mentioned earlier, this project is a partnership between UC Riverside and RUSD. The proposed STEM education project is located on the UC Riverside campus and will require a ground lease to RUSD. UC Riverside prepared the draft EIR as the CEQA lead agency, and RUSD will act as a responsible agency. This slide shows the purposes of CEQA. In summary, CEQA is a state law that requires agencies to analyze the environmental impacts of their projects and decisions. The purposes of an environmental impact report, such as the one prepared for the STEM Education Center project, are to one, provide public agencies and the public with detailed information about the likely significant effects of a project on the environment, two, to indicate ways that significant effects can be mitigated or avoided, and three, to identify alternatives to the project. This slide generally summarizes the CEQA EIR process for the STEM Education Center project and highlights the opportunities for the public to provide input and comments. We released a notice of preparation in February 2022 for public review. During the comment period for the notice of preparation, we conducted a scoping meeting to receive input on the issues the EIR should address. The draft EIR was released for public review on March 18, 2024, and we are currently in the public comment period, which will close on May 2, 2024. Following the close of the public review period on May 2, 2024, we will prepare responses to each of the comments received as part of the final EIR. Once the final EIR has been prepared, the university would then consider certification of the EIR and approval of the ground lease terms. The RUSD Board of Education will consider certification of the EIR and approval of the project at some point after that. This slide shows all environmental issues analyzed in the draft EIR, which include all the 20 environmental topics identified in Appendix G of the CEQA guidelines. Now we will go over the draft EIR conclusions. The draft EIR did not identify any significant and unavoidable impacts, which are project impacts that would result in a substantial adverse physical change in the environment, even with implementation of the feasible mitigation measures. In other words, all environmental impacts of this project will be reduced to less than significant. This slide presents the resource topics for which mitigation measures were proposed to reduce environmental impacts. As shown in this table, these impacts include aesthetics, specifically light and glare, biological resources, specifically nesting birds and special status bats, cultural resources, specifically archeological resources, geology and soils, specifically paleontological resources, hazards and hazardous materials, transportation and wildfire, all three of those specifically related to emergency response and evacuation plans, construction noise and tribal cultural resources. For each impact, specific mitigation measures are identified that reduce the project's environmental effects to a less than significant level. These mitigation measures include minimization measures for light and glare from buildings and vehicles, pre-construction surveys and avoidance buffers for nesting birds, building design measures to reduce bird strikes, pre-construction surveys and exclusionary methods for roosting bats, procedures for unanticipated discoveries of archeological resources, a paleontological resources monitoring and mitigation program, a construction management plan, construction noise reduction measures, procedures for unanticipated discoveries of tribal cultural resources, and tribal cultural resources monitoring and construction worker training. In addition to these project-specific impacts, CEQA requires an evaluation of the significance of the project's contribution to significant cumulative impacts when viewed in the connection with the effects of past projects, other current projects, and probable future projects. The draft EIR concluded the project would have a cumulatively considerable or significant contribution to cumulative impacts related to all resource categories listed on this slide. However, with implementation of the mitigation measures identified in the table, the project's contribution to these significant cumulative impacts would be reduced to a less than significant level. 
The draft DIR also includes an evaluation of alternatives that feasibly attain most of the basic objectives of the project while reducing the significant environmental impacts of the proposed project. The proposed project would not result in any significant and unavoidable impacts. Therefore, the selected alternatives focus on those that would generally reduce project impacts. In all, the EIR presents six alternatives and analyzes three in detail in section six. Alternative one, the no project alternative, is required to be considered by CEQA to compare the impacts of approving the project with the impacts of not approving the project. This alternative involves keeping the project site in its current condition with no utility upgrades. Alternative two, modified enrollment, would involve the same physical development as the proposed project, but would modify enrollment patterns to accommodate approximately 390 full-time students and 820 part-time students, with a total enrollment of 1,210 students. The general construction and operational parameters of alternative two would be similar to those of the proposed project. However, the decrease in full-time students and the increase in part-time students would result in fewer students being individually dropped off by parents or driving to school and more students riding the bus as compared to the proposed project. Under alternative three, renovation or expansion of the existing STEM Academy at the Mount Vernon site, the proposed STEM Education Center would not be constructed at the project site. Instead, the enrollment capacity of the existing STEM Academy located at 4466 Mount Vernon Avenue in Riverside would be expanded, either by building a new school facility at this location or by modernizing the existing buildings. Enrollment at the existing STEM Academy would in be increased by approximately 200 students in grades 9 through 12 to a total capacity of 800 students across grades 5 through 12. The current uses on the project site would continue. Under alternatives one and three, the open recreational fields on the project site would continue to be used by UC Riverside intramural and club sport teams. However, under all three alternatives, the existing joint use agreement between the UC Regents and the city of Riverside for use of the fields would terminate in September 2027. CEQA guidelines notes that an EIR should identify the environmentally superior alternative. As discussed in section six of the draft EIR, there are different trade-offs for each alternative, which are dependent upon the specific environmental resource areas. Alternative two, modified enrollment, would result in lesser impacts to air quality, greenhouse gas, energy, and transportation than the proposed project because more students would be bused to school and fewer would be dropped off individually. Therefore, alternative two, modified enrollment alternative, is considered the environmentally superior alternative. However, this alternative does not allow RUSD to serve the same full-time student population as compared to the proposed project. So if you are interested, you can review the draft DIR and its appendices in the following ways listed on this slide. First on the UC Riverside website at https colon forward slash forward slash pdc.ucr.edu forward slash e-n-v-i-r-o-n M-E-N-T-A-L dash P-L-A-N-N-I-N-G dash C-E-Q-A. This link is also provided in the notice of availability. A USB or flash drive can also be provided by UC Riverside upon request. In addition, hard copies of the draft DIR and appendices are available at UC Riverside's office at 1223 University Avenue, Suite 240, Riverside, California, 92507 at the RUSD office at 3070 Washington Street in Riverside, California, 92504, and at the Downtown Riverside Library at 3900 Mission Inn Avenue, Riverside, California, 92501. These addresses are also noted in the Notice of Availability. Before we get started on the public hearing comments, a few reminders to point out. If you would like to speak, please submit a speaker card and hand it to one of the ladies in the back at the check-in table. Belen will then announce your name and the next speaker in queue. Prior to speaking, please state your name and note whether you are affiliated with an association or an organization before providing your comment. Each speaker will have two minutes to provide comments and the timer is over here on my left. If you speak, your comments will be transcribed and addressed in the final EIR. As a reminder, please speak slowly and clearly to ensure the audience can hear and audio is able to capture your comments. 
Some other reminders, please provide written comments addressed to Stephanie Tang at 1223 University Avenue, Suite 240, Riverside, California, 92507. Or you may submit comments via email to sequa at ucr.edu. That's C-E-Q-A at ucr.edu. Be sure to include your name, address, phone number, and email address. Please also note in the subject line, STEM Education Center EIR. All comments should be submitted by 5 p.m. on May 2nd, 2024. All of this information is also in the notice of availability if you need to refer to it later. This slide deck and the recorded presentation are available online at https colon forward slash forward slash pdc.ucr.edu forward slash environmental dash P L A N N I N G dash C E Q A. The recorded presentation will also be made available online at https colon forward slash forward slash B I T dot L Y forward slash three T one F two G eight. We will now open it up for public comments. We have 16 speaker cards. We will start with uh, Robert Casada, followed by Will Grover. Good evening. My name is Robert Casada. I live on Spruce Street near UCR. So I'm a professor at Cal State Fullerton, and if one of my students submitted this ER, EIR report as a research paper for the semester, I would question its methodology and conclusions. Let's just look at the traffic study. So the traffic study was conducted on a Tuesday from noon to 2 p.m. That is not representative of how traffic uses Blaine and Watkins. It's like evaluating traffic patterns at a uh, gallery at Tyler at 2 a.m. and conclude no one shops there. This disregards commuters from the surrounding neighborhoods using Blaine Street to reach or return from the freeway during the, the time of school and the workday starts and ends. Try using Blaine or Watkins from 7 to 9 a.m or 3 to 5 p.m. It is bad now and will get worse. How can a report observe a new dorm will be built on Blaine but not extrapolate its impact on traffic patterns? The report lists the nearly 300 unit apartment complex being built next to Stater Brothers, but it doesn't fail to consider the impact this will have just at that corner. You must know how the STEM Academy causes a huge traffic problem on Watkins and Mount Vernon Avenue as parents create a conga line of cars stopped along the street waiting for pickup. The report does not show the impact the REACH Leadership STEAM Academy on Ruston has on that street in Linden. I suggest that the people involved in the ERR and the school board come to the neighborhood in the morning and around 3 p.m. to observe the traffic problems. Please don't walk. Take your car. Experience what all of us endure weekdays. Bottom line, it's a good idea, but not in this location. I notice that the project alternatives do not allow a fourth location. Build it in the citrus groves. Hi everyone, I'm a professor of bioengineering at UC Riverside and my job is to prepare the next generation of scientists and engineers for jobs in STEM fields uh, to increase the economic competitiveness of the Inland Empire and of California. And I've been doing that job long enough to know that the process of preparing the students for STEM fields doesn't begin when they set foot in my classroom as a freshman. It starts much earlier in K through 12 when it's crucial that we show students what college is and what careers in STEM we can prepare them for. And doing this is even more vital in a district like RUSD where so many of our students come from backgrounds that are traditionally underrepresented in STEM fields and who are often the first in their families to consider college or a career in STEM. 
And I personally can't think of a better tool for accomplishing this than the, than the proposed STEM Education Center. Imagine learning about insects in a biology class in high school and then walking up the hill to visit the entomology museum and attending a talk by a researcher from one of the top ranked entomology programs in the country and even coming into our lab to help out with their research. Or learning about the history of water resources in California and social studies and then walking over to Orbach Library to review the state's water resource archives and talk to engineers who are developing new ways to conserve water and maybe even working in a biology lab to help develop drought resistant crops. And even if you had a billion dollars, you could never duplicate these resources at North or Poly or King or really anywhere in the world because they are unique to UCR. But I personally think the most important thing about having UCR students on campus, or RUSD students on UCR's campus, is that those students will be able to see our students. They'll see how diverse we are, the amazing things we're doing and accomplishing, and the careers we're preparing those students for. And the RUSD students can see themselves in our students see maybe for the first time that they belong at the University of California and at UCR, and that a career in the STEM field is really possible. That's why I support the STEM Ed Center, and I urge UCR and RUSD to not only continue with planning for the center, but also to redouble our efforts in Sacramento to advocate for funding for the center. Thank you. Michael Tin, followed by Vanessa Rogers, followed by Nora Multi. Um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Michael Tin, and I'm a third year uh, computer engineering student uh, at UCR. Uh, I'm also a member uh, of the RSA Foundation, and uh, I'm currently running a program at UCR uh, called Changing Scientific Importance for Youth, otherwise known as uh, Delta Sci-Fi. Uh, we're an educational outreach program, and we work to create uh, immersive educational opportunities with schools in the uh, Inland Empire. Uh, also including RSA. Um, I actually also live on um, uh, the same street as um, the, like the, like the REACH Academy. And um, so yeah, um, my parents are both immigrants uh, from Burma and they worked very hard to give me a life here. Uh, I grew up with uh, programs such as uh, Science Olympiad, uh, Math Counts, and FIRST Robotics and it's truly been uh, very uh, rewarding to work with RSA to bring these programs here. Uh, I've personally gone to RSA almost every day this school year to lead the Science Olympiad Initiative alongside um, uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Zonker, who's the after school programs coordinator. I'm also actually letting the kids uh, shave my head as uh, they, they actually just won first place at the regional competition. Um, it's been truly amazing to see these kids learn and grow and expand their knowledge. And I hope to also pursue a career in ed education uh, after college. I hope that this project will strongly be uh, be considered, as I know that it has the difference to make. Uh, I know that it has the potential to make a difference in so many kids' lives. Uh, thank you. I read a couple of pages, but I'm just going to put it aside because traffic was discussed uh, by the previous speaker. My name is Nora Moti, and we lived here in 1973, so my husband could go to UCR graduate school. We lived in the student housing. Now it's leveled down, you're building uh, high-rise uh, dorms. And I used to take my kids all the way down uh, Blaine to Iowa, Kmart, and on our left, it was nothing else but orange groves and wonderful aroma will come on, in springtime. Those are all gone. And now, uh, today, I live by Buck Springs Mountain. It took me half an hour to go about five o'clock traffic. It took me half an hour to come from my home to this place, it's about 3.2 miles. Think about right now, the traffic and what will happen later on when you build when you build your dorms when you build your housing complexes by uh, Kmart and it will be unbearable as someone said go over there at five o'clock and check the traffic not at three in the morning in Tyler Mall so I'm also a commission on aging 
And we say our motto is to improve the quality of life for our uh, elderly. Well, aging. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, many of our neighborhood are over the age of 70. And we cannot get, in case of emergency, God knows how we're going to get to the hospital. Not very long ago, I had a true emergency. I had to be rushed to the uh, Riverside community. If, if I saw the traffic today, I would have never made it. So we are not against the STEM school. My husband used to teach. Uh, My name is Vanessa Rogers. I am the incoming president for STEM PTSA and an active community leader within the city of Riverside. I am here to bring excitement and advocate for all students of RUSD. I am heavily involved in different programs throughout the city and have heard through various discussions how our students are our future. Um, students start from TK through college. Now, I understand we're discussing the future of high school, but we all need to see what stems from the project we are, we are discussing this evening. As I mentioned, with my involvement throughout the city, I have learned that our students are our future for economic development within our city. We all need to see the future here today. I've been in recent discussions on how the University of Riverside is looking for students being our next generation of inventors within our region. Think of what else could be on this site and said, because honestly, something will be there. Uh, if you leave here today wondering what this project brings for our community, leave with this thought. Riverside STEM Academy is number 83 in the nation. The nation. Riverside STEM Academy, Academy is ranked number 10 in California high schools based on last year's rankings. Not 10 years ago, last year's rankings. Um, why wouldn't we want to grow the potential of what our future brings to our region by improving and growing our top ranked school? The future is here. It's right here in Riverside. So think with that, leave with that, and just thank you all for taking your time and listening to each and every one of us this evening. Sammy Luna, followed by Shani Beeman. Followed by Tim McKee. Hello, good evening everyone. Sammy Luna here. Um, I'm a John W. North uh, Alumni Association president and um, if you wanna join, let me know. I know there's some of you out there. Um, first and foremost, I would like to say that I support STEM. Uh, it is definitely an important aspect of education for those students who want to pursue it. However, I do not support this STEM school in this location with this funding. If you are as familiar with this area as I am, as I grew up here, and my parents still reside there, you know that the traffic is already congested. The traffic impact of this school will be significant. Parking, according to the EIR, will not suffice attendance. Only 62 spaces for students. Parking in the vicinity on the streets is already significantly challenging. The intramural green space, which is only one of two spaces in the area, will be gone, which is unfair to the surrounding community. To say that there is no substantial adverse impact on the community seems unrealistic, as the traffic and congestion that will be present with having to deliver at minimum over 800 bodies plus staff to the site daily. My son, who is a senior in high school at another school, said he would feel unappreciated and invisible if he were at North High School as a student. North High School is less than a mile away and is being completely ignored in this proposal. It would be more environmentally friendly to bring forth a proposal that includes North High School as the STEM school. Provide the proposed funding to upgrade North Campus and everyone wins. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Timothy Mackey. I'm a recently retired pediatrician and was also adjunct clinical faculty for the UCR School of Medicine. I've lived on Mount Vernon since 1989. And uh, you've probably already heard what I'm gonna say, but 
policies that are driven by data rely on the accuracy of that data. And I have some problems with the timing of when they did this uh, study, as you've already heard. It was done uh, during COVID, and it was done in the fall of 2021 at a time when UCR students didn't return until February of 1st of 2022. So when this study was done, they were not trying to find parking places, driving to school. Also during the fall of 2021 is when the students in the school districts around Southern California, including RUSD, were migrating their per children from remote learning back to in-person in, uh, learning, but it was not an all immediate. It was transferring slowly. They did not just, there were many parents were given the option to still do remote learning for a while. So the number of people accessing the, to get to school uh, was severely decreased, I think, during this time frame. And I think this needs to be looked at again at a more realistic time because noon to two o'clock is not realistic. Seven to nine o'clock is. It takes me when I leave, used to leave, to get from Watkins to the 60 freeway, uh, as long as it took to get me from the 60 freeway to Parkview Hospital, as long, sometimes longer, just depends. And I think that the increased traffic is gonna be a nightmare, especially around uh, Watkins, I'm not Watkins, but uh, Blaine and Canyon Crest, and also um, the um, Linden and Canyon Crest. I think the traffic issue, if you've never driven during Good evening, my name is Shawnee Beeman, and like the previous speaker, Ms. Luna, I support STEM education, just not at this proposed location. I believe this draft report is incomplete and uses provocative language that confirms community concern about this project. First, the alternative section of the report is incomplete. The section of the report dismisses the idea of locating the facility at other high schools in the district. However, it does not consider specifically locating the facility at John W. North High School, which has considerable advantages for meeting the identified project goals summarized as follows. Co-location to UCR. North High School is only blocks away from UCR. Supporting grades 9 through 12 STEM education. North High School already supports these education levels. Enhanced STEM education. Location does not impact that, lo that goal. Efficient use of space. What is more efficient than using already available space at North High School? Meet UCR's long-range development plan. Why would the district use its limited resources to meet the UCR's development goals? Building the project at North High School is worthy of consideration. As such, this report should be modified to include a serious evaluation of this option. Second, this report uses tone-deaf language and validates the community's deep suspicion that the effort to build another high school only blocks away from North is to assure that elite STEM students will not be required to attend school with students from the highly diverse attendance area. No fewer than 10 times this report states the STEM Education Center would provide a, quote, safe and secure location, end quote. This language suggests that the other RUSD school sites are not safe and secure, and perhaps more specifically, that North High School is not safe or secure. This language should be struck from the report. Thank you. John Keith, Rich Davis, followed by Rita Nieto.
Um, hello, everybody. My name is John Keith. I'm a third year student at UCR, and I'm the current president of the club baseball at UCR student organization. And today I'd like to speak on behalf of the club baseball, club rugby, and the ultimate Frisbee teams, and their respective competitive teams as well. Um, the Blaine Complex, the softball fields for us, has been a big safety net um, with the university, and we're very grateful with the competitive sports department for letting us use the facility. Um, but the destruction of the fields would lead us to having no more opportunities and spaces for practices. Um, the complex has been the only area in Riverside that we've been able to use for practices, and there hasn't been a lot of availability for our team uh, to play games. Um, so far, the fact that we've had to travel out to Roland Heights every weekend in February and March for our games, um, for our home games. And um, just the, the use of the field for us, um, if there is a school to be built there, we, we don't have any more opportunities. And for a team, a uh, developing team like ours that's in contention for a playoff spot in our league and in contention for a national championship. Um, I don't think it's going to serve a greater purpose for us, um, especially since we're trying to use the field as often as we can. Um, you know, we're out there two, three, four, five, six, even six days a week sometimes to just practice, um, to use the f whatever facilities we can get. Um, as a self-funded organization, using another facility um, is just impossible for us um, as, a, as a club that uses tens of thousands of dollars every year um, just to compete in the league and buy uniforms and equipment. Um, I'm going to oppose the idea of this new facility. Thank you. My name is Rich Davis, a community member that opposes the project. Some of my remarks have also been covered. Hundreds of community members have opposed this project, yet UCR and RUSD continue to disregard the harm this project could have in our neighborhoods. So I turn my remarks to the seat officials who are here tonight. How can you as city officials approve the development of a college dorm and a high school on the same intersection accommodating nearly 3,000 people and think this would not impact traffic and the daily living of our community? It has been understood that this school is a commuter school, not a neighborhood school where hundreds of students that live in the neighborhood would attend. The traffic and parking addressed in the EIR are grossly flawed and misleading. To mitigate traffic concerns, the EIR fully relies on the assumption that the 1,200 students are to be bused to the site with 10 buses coming from all over Riverside at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 3 p.m. There is no mandate stating that in order to attend this school, you must be bused, and if there was one, it would be impossible to enforce. Look at all schools. You find long lines of parents, cars dropping off and picking up students. This is reality. There is no space for cars to line on Blaine and Canyon Crest. The plan also is to put another traffic light between Blaine and Linden, this stalling even more traffic. The city needs to review its 2023 traffic study done on Blaine and um, uh, Canyon Crest, and you'll find that your study is far different than the one that was done by this ERA, EIR done in during COVID. In regards to parking, the EIR clearly states that the 153 parking spaces, nearly 90 spaces are not for student parking, leaving 60 spaces for students. The EIR totally ignores the need of additional par student parking. This is a high school. Students are going to drive like at all high schools. Where is the additional parking? St simple drive around the project, no parking allowed on Blaine, Kenya Crest, Russ and Linden nearby neighborhoods already lined with parked cars. The ERA addresses three alternatives, but did not address North High School a half mile away as one of its alternatives. This project redefines the word. Good evening, my name is Rita. Oh, are you oh you're just ending her. I'm sorry, my name is Rita Nieto and I'm a resident. Uh, my first thing is just talk about the parking. Everybody has talked about it, but it's like there's 153 parking spaces, only 62 are those are gonna be for students. Where are the additional students gonna park? Somebody mentioned to me that they're gonna be mostly bused. Um, I wanna know that they compare the driving of students to North and Poly, because my students, my grandchildren go to those schools and believe me, most of the students are being dropped off or they're driving there. Somebody mentioned no, no students park on Lincoln. High school students drive
drive and they park on my block. So I know that there's students there. So where everybody's thinking these students are gonna be bused, I don't know where that information's coming from. I find it very hard to believe. Believe me, students are 15 years old and they're ready to get their licenses now. So I know, my kids did. So, and my grandkids, there everybody's driving, so. Yeah, so anyway, that's my big concern is where are these students gonna park? I don't think the, like they said, the parking, the traffic was done at a time when there's nobody there. So obviously, and my thing is that when they were doing, trying to build something at my neighborhood, um, the ER basic said, oh, there's only gonna be like a 2% increase. Well, you, they don't live in that residence and they don't understand 1%, 2%, 3% additional traffic impacts the community. I said, you don't live on that community, you don't understand. And so I need, that needs to be really addressed. I need to know if they did a comparison. Um, so the traffic study is, needs to be redone. It's not good, it's not done at the right time. Also, I, w I actually have the intramural because uh, as John Kim said, they use that. Uh, um, if when I'm reading the IR, they say, oh, the student, nobody uses that. It's used very rarely. I wanna bring up something. I'm a member of Lincoln Park community. And somebody mentioned, oh, nobody uses that park. They don't live in that residence. How do they know? My children, my grandchildren, the neighborhood kids are there every day on those uh, swings and playing and people use it for birthdays. So for somebody to say these intramural um, fields are not being used, I wanna know who they got that information from. Somebody actually. Joshua Zonker, followed by Guramanta Kalsa, followed by Sue Johnson. Good evening. My name is Joshua Zonker. I'm a teacher at Riverside STEM Academy, currently serving as the after school program coordinator. This has been my fifth year at STEM and seventh in RUSD, and as an advocate for STEM education, I am filled with gratitude to be a part of a the current STEM Academy program, as well as a district and community that has supported and advocated for STEM education and opportunities for students across the district, regardless of neighborhood or school of attendance. It has also been a pleasure to work alongside UCR professors, students, and staff on various initiatives, such as STEM Science Olympiad coaching program that Michael mentioned, summer STEM workshops, and grant writing, to name a few. I do not have much to say in regards to the EIR, except I'm excited and pleased to see that areas of impact range from no impact to less than significant with mitigation. I will say that I am a proud supporter of this project, and I hope that everyone knows there are teachers, students, families, professors, student organizations, community members, and many others that are working diligently to live out and work towards the vision and mission of Riverside STEM Academy that was pioneered over 10 years ago. Moving forward, I encourage us all to look for ways to connect and build understanding, and let's celebrate our community successes even when those might be adjacent to our own personal causes. I'm so excited for the planned East Side and Casablanca Elementary Schools. I am pleased to see many of our school sites receiving aesthetic and functional improvements. While my heart pulls more towards science and math these days, as a former basketball player, I can even appreciate and celebrate the new gymnasiums at several of our high schools. I hope we can all recognize and appreciate that in Riverside STEM Academy, we have a top 10 public middle and high school program and the partnerships and opportunities that this helps facilitate are invaluable. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Guru Mantra Khalsa. I'm the co-chair of the University Neighborhood Association. And uh, the STEM Academy, number eight in the nation, my question is why aren't the rest of our schools rated? You know, your alternative project of no STEM Academy says nobody's gonna learn STEM. And yet we're spending millions of dollars in studies to build a building, not a STEM program. So I'm confused about our alternatives here. You give us a no project alternative, you give us a scale down alternative, you give us a remodeling alternative, and you reference SCAG's healthy communities vehicle mile traveled as the reason we can't do the remodeling or probably not north, but we didn't consider that. But it's the same road servicing any alternative and that's not being addressed. And then you further go on to say there's no air quality impact. So this is disingenuous. 
It's not about STEM education. It's about virtue signaling. It's about creating opportunities for the privileged at the expense of taxpayers whose students are still being bussed all over the place 30 years later from the east side. This is shameful, and we should reconsider this EIR. Thank you. Sue Johnson, followed by Sarah Simpson, followed by Luce. Thank you. Uh, Sue Johnson, I uh, went to UCR when there were four buildings and there were no pavement. So I have seen a lot of growth and it has been absolutely magnificent. Um, I also served on a board that decided policy for the university. The, uh, the what I came to learn was that freshmen came enthusiastically and sought to major in STEM, but they didn't stay in STEM because they weren't prepared, so they chose a, a different subject. So our, uh, that caused me to realize how valuable what the Riverside Unified School District did to try and create a truly rigorous STEM school for the students that, uh, as we just heard, in 11 years, that has achieved uh, status as one of the top 10 in uh, 1,535 schools in California. We've all seen all of that. That uh, as because we did have some headwinds there. I have two Press Enterprise newspapers. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, the endorsement chair for pro pro Proposition O, and throughout the whole city, I was able to get literally hundreds of endorsements for people who wanted to see STEM specific education by the Riverside School District. So there was one headline that said, STEM to get 50 million. And then Hello, my name is Sarah Simpson. I've been a homeowner um, in the UCR neighborhood since 2004, so I think 20 years qualifies me to speak um, on behalf of our neighborhood as much as many of my neighbors have. And um, I'm proud of the growth I see. I'm proud of every new project that UCR has been working on. I have been working on this synergy between RUSD and UCR since the very beginning. And I've seen so many children's lives changed. And my goal all along with promoting that has been to amplify that effect for all kinds of students across the district. I can tell I've been really remiss in not coming and talking to some of my neighbors at our University Neighborhood Association meetings because very clearly 
you all haven't actually visited the school and don't really understand the students who are there, you would see that they do actually represent students from all across the district and from all levels, all socioeconomic levels and all backgrounds. And so that's my bad. I'm sorry I haven't brought you that message before. Um, also, I took, took me 10 minutes to get here from my house. It didn't take me a half an hour. Um, when I try to race my child when he doesn't end up driving over to North and I'm trying to get him there in eight minutes from my house in the morning, maybe it takes me 10. And that's even if I accidentally turn down the street, um, turn down Lind uh, Ruston and go up Linden past the Reach Academy, which I'm so glad is there. I, I dance with the founder and principal of that school, another great asset. Um, it's very hard to face change. I know it's scary. Um, I know we don't know what's going to happen. I know there are concerns. But I have faith, and I want, well, I want what's best for so many kids in our community. Thank you. Luz Negron, followed by Barbara Gable, followed by Yolanda Esquivel. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? OK. Uh, this is my neighborhood. I live by Highland. Um, and I've been living in Riverside for around 30 years. So este es mi vecindario. And when I want to, to share with you uh, this afternoon is that with all respect, I totally oppose to the UCR STEM high school project. After reading the environmental impact, I noticed the lack of knowledge about the well-being of our multicultural community. The amount of traffic will affect the health of so many children walking to our elementary and middle schools nearby. Also will affect the opportunities of our youth practicing sports near their neighborhood that are very necessary for them and their families to have in a safe environment without cost. In addition, that land is a sacred land. Over more, over more than 10 years, I, ha I have been participating in the annual powwow that is celebrated in that land. Indigenous tribes from all around California and beyond gather in the site to share their traditions and dances through the rhythms of the native drums emulating the sound heartbeat of our Mother Earth. We are living in challenging times where understanding and respect for traditions are very important, as well the emotional and healthy balance of our children. What do you think that, we, that they're going to tell them when they see that everything that is around their neighborhood is being Hello, my name is Barbara Gable, and I belong to the University Neighborhood Association. Um, I live off of Watkins Drive behind UCR. When this is used as a freeway shortcut, uh, mornings and evenings by thousands of cars. Um, this was, this came, this came about long before Waze. It had nothing to do with technology. It's just the only way to get from the freeway to the other freeway. Um, so um, it should be noted that in the ridiculous window of time that was measured by the EIR uh, is not affected. It's perfectly fine then. It's in the mornings and in the afternoons when kids are being brought to school and being picked up from school. Um, so no one here objects to STEM education, of course. STEM education is extremely valuable. But our point was always that it should be 
spread throughout the district, not concentrated in an elite school. <clears throat> and it does not belong in an already very congested neighborhood. Um, instead, I suggest that funds be provided to all schools in the district for STEM education. And for example, North High School, which is, looks exactly the same as it did when my boys went there 50 years ago. The only thing that's new there is a, a football stadium. So this tells you what the priorities are of the school district. Um, so I urge you to Good evening. My name is Yolanda Esquivel, and we live at 2939 Floral Avenue here in Riverside, 92507. My husband and I have lived here for 30 years. Our home is less than half a mile from the proposed high school. And I just want to add that we are not against STEM education at all. We are very concerned with the construction of this school in our community and even more surprised at the findings of, these ERR, of, of this EIR to find less than significant impacts in the following areas. One, traffic. The data given on this project was taken for one day only in November of 2021 and for only one or two hours during the noon time. This is really unacceptable data since morning and afternoon traffic for the commuter population was, take, was not taken. Noon time is the area when there is always less traffic. This report does not include the impact of traffic from the new UCR student housing of 1,600 students and 300 unit apartments being built next to Stater Brothers on Iowa. This school would have an uh, attendance of up to uh, 1,200 students at the number of people coming to live at the new student housing and the apartment units on Iowa, the increase in number of people and cars is huge. Traffic is already greatly impacted by the number of cars and semi-trucks coming down on Blaine, Iowa, and Watkins. There have already been several accidents with cars and semis. Another concern is parking. The 153 parking space for this school is unacceptable because it is assumed the students will be using the bus. Here in California, most of us use cars, and the school is proposed to have up to 1,200 Amit Roy, followed by Yojini Braslaw, followed by Patricia Verbeul. Hello, uh, I'm Amit Rai Chowdhury. Uh, I'm a professor at, a professor at UCR uh, in the Bones College of Engineering. Uh, my kids have gone to STEM. Uh, I've been associated with the school for almost 12 years now. Um, there are a couple of things I want to point out. Um, one is that the students at STEM have excelled, and they've excelled with very limited resources. And uh, having the school will help, will provide them with the resources, and they can probably do a lot better um, and, um, than what they have. Uh, the second thing I want to point out, I keep hearing about the traffic. We live about 100 meters away from one of the largest schools in the district, if not the largest school. Almost everyone comes in by car, and traffic is bad in a couple of times during the day. And do we complain about it once in a while? Yes. Are we frustrated with it once in a while? Yes. But it's five extra minutes of driving. That's the cost. And what is the benefit? The benefit is the education of the future generation of kids. And that is where the advantage of the school lies. Of course, there will be some impacts on the neighborhood. There is always some impact of any development that happens anywhere. Thank you. Can you hear me? 
Good evening, my name is Yogini Braslaw, and I'm the past president of North High School PTSA, and currently, and have been North's mock trial coach for the last 12 years. I'm also the current president of Riverside STEM Academy PTSA for the last two years. I am very active in the community in the areas of legal, educational, business, and economic development. My passion is to advocate for all students within the Riverside community so they can grow up to be compassionate, empathetic leaders. STEM has over 58 different languages and ethnicities. This last Friday, we threw a multicultural spring fling. We had over 15 different uh, nationalities, cultures representing their food, their dance. We had North Ballet for Glorical come and dance to um, do entertainment for our students. We had North, the Tahitian dance group, for, uh, who are uh, the football players, also come and dance. We are a school that wants to be unified. We don't want to pit North against STEM, STEM against North. I do believe uh, my two older kids graduated from the IB program at North High School. And I believe that we're looking at the wrong factors when we're talking about. Speaking of money, North had a facelift about a year ago behind where the staff and the students park. And now they're tearing it down almost a year and a half later to build an auxiliary gym. So the funding is there. The funding's not the issue. Unfortunately, population growth is inevitable. And that comes with traffic problems. I moved here from Los Angeles. I go out there a lot. My parents live in Woodland Hills. The traffic is far worse than we're talking about here. I came from RCOE here t to speak at this meeting. It, during traffic time, it took me 15 minutes. There's going to be traffic. I understand the traffic situation. I live by JFK and King High School. It takes me almost 20, 30 minutes to get out of my community during the school hours, but I understand that. I didn't, you know, the, the school. Oh dear. Um, thanks. I'm Patricia Verweil, and I've lived in Riverside since 1958, with a little bit of time away, but basically since 1958. I've lived in this neighborhood uh, for the last 30 years. Um, I'm a retired teacher, and I support STEM education. Absolutely. I do not support this project. Every student in Riverside Unified School District deserves a STEM education. And we have North High School right down the street. Um, talk about traffic. My granddaughter goes to Polly. Oh my God. If you have ever gone down Arlington, uh, not Arlington, Central and Victoria at drop, pick up and drop off times, you just bring her coffee because you're going to be there a while. It's horrible. And this situation will be much, much worse because the streets are much narrower. So traffic is a, definitely an issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I believe STEM education is so important that every single student in Riverside Unified deserves to have a complete and honest STEM education. But if you are determined to segregate our STEM, put it at North for crying out loud. It's right there. So it, if you're... And I don't believe in segregating STEM from the rest of the schools. I mean, it, it's insane. Besides which, there's no athletic fields in your STEM pro proposal. So are we to assume that just because you're in STEM, you don't want to do athletics? Come on. If you go to North, you've got athletics, you've got art, and you've got STEM. That's where it needs to be. Thank you. Dennis Lopez, followed by Kevin Dawson, followed by Diane Quasman. Good evening. My name is Dennis Lopez, and I've been a resident of Riverside uh, since uh, the year 2000. And I am a supporter of STEM. Uh, in fact, I was the original Mesa Schools uh, director at, the, at UC Riverside in 1998. So I, I've been since then a, a firm believer in STEM. Um, I'm also very concerned, and I, I want to associate myself with a comment a couple of speakers ago when uh, our colleague said 
that there should be STEM throughout the district in all the high schools. I had the wonderful occasion of volunteering at Arlington High School about 10 years ago for a Spanish-speaking parent conference, and it was packed. There's so much interest in the Casablanca area in the education of their children. I think that Arlington High School ha ought to have the equal, the equal resources with respect to STEM as Ramona, as North, as any other school in the district. Um, I raised my, my two children here. One is now an attorney in DC. The other is a labor and delivery nurse. So my family believes in STEM. We support the schools. We support partnerships between the district and the university. And thank God, I was looking at the university website today. I counted about 52 people whose role at UC Riverside is development. Just think of the millions of dollars that they can bring into a partnership for STEM to be at uh, equally at Arlington and at Ramona High School, at all of the high schools in Riverside Unified. Living here for 24 years, that's the, the, the type of thing that it brought me to this community that we have a concern for all of our students in all of our schools. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Kevin Dawson. I'm a UCR alum and a neighbor. Uh, both my children are adults now and they're both uh, the product of the, um, the Riverside Unified School District with the... Um, I'm upset with this project. I support STEM. I think it should be vigorously taught throughout the um, school district, but this project violates the master plan for higher education that guides the mission of the University of California, which is post-secondary post education and research. Riverside Unified School District is the poster child for illegally violating Prop 39. Prop 39 is, what it did was it lowered the threshold for passing school bonds. It required a certified specific project list, which the school district developed and did not include a single new school on that project list. This list had to be attached to the bond measure on the ballot put before voters. What the school district did then is after Measure O was passed, $400 million, a few months later, the school district adopted a supplemental project list that added four brand new schools of which this was one and they made this project their number one priority and the school board member promoting this said we have made this our number one priority and because there's not enough money in the bond measure to have everything we need to look down that list of other needy projects and i know they're needy because i've looked and take money from those projects how would you like to be the principal pta or parent of one of those students or those schools that had needy projects that the school board was saying they needed to take money away from to build this for elite schools i didn't graduate Hello. It's nice to see some familiar faces out there. Uh, my name's Diane Quasman. Hello, Mr. Williams. Um, 
I am a past member of the Measure O Oversight Committee. I'm a past um, PTSA president of Riverside STEM Academy, and I am currently uh, on the board of the Riverside STEM Academy Foundation, and with my friend Nora here, I'm also a commissioner on the Council of Aging in this gorgeous city. I've lived here about 22 years, and I love it, and I volunteered all through that time, and I'm the mother of a STEM high school graduate who's continuing his STEM education in college. He graduated two years ago, so why am I here tonight? You seem like you're all really nice people, and I know we'd all rather be somewhere else, right? I'm here because I care about Riverside STEM Academy. I care that students all over the district get a chance to have an authentic and innovative STEM education. Riverside has a lot going for it. We're lucky to have a highly ranked University of California campus in our city. We are especially lucky that UCR has a special commitment to underserved minority students like those at RUSD and consistently ranks first or second in the nation for social mobility. They realize that college freshmen, and I know you've heard this before, don't just materialize out of thin air. They begin as high school students who need to be taught, nurtured, and Shirley Tribble, followed by Melody Clark, followed by Tom Scott. Well, I'm going to talk fast. First of all, the EIR study, from what I've heard, that data is mis misleading. But um, on the STEM program, uh, we're not against the STEM program. I believe, like most of us do, is that we would like to see it in all of our high schools because it's needed in all high schools. The STEM program, the, some of the STEM schools, we've uh, heard that the students do not have to live in Riverside. So that is another issue. If they do not have to live in Riverside, that they can come from other areas. But if, they, if, if that's not true, that's okay. But we need this opportunity given to all of our students in Riverside. I was born and raised here. I went to all the, I went to all the elementary, I went to elementary school, junior high school. I went to Casablanca Elementary School. I went to Emerson. So I know what the difference is in going to the schools. Now, someone mentioned about the O bond, and you talked about North High School. We have been fighting to get North upgraded. It was on the top of the list, and went on the bottom of the list. Nobody knows why. But we have not even finished. Now we don't have enough money for just getting things done. We, right now, have over 1,300 elementary kids bust every morning. How would you like? your child getting up at the crack of dawn to be bused all over Riverside. That's why we're fighting to get these elementary schools built. That's what that old money built money for. We are not against the STEM school. We don't have money for the STEM school right now. We've got to get these elementary schools so these poor kids that are getting up at the crack of dawn can go to a school by their home. It is not fair that these kids go to school where their parents cannot even go. Okay, so I would like to, first of all, say that, of course, we have STEM at every single uh, school at RUSD, and uh, the STEM Academy is for students who um, 
think that they might want to um, uh, major in STEM. So why build the STEM Center at UCR? It's not about a new science building. We could build that anywhere. But if we do, we will get the same results we get now. And you may not know this, but RUSD is failing at teaching STEM. The state test results from last year showed that only 24% of RUSD 11th grade students were proficient at math, 24%. We can't keep doing the same thing and think somehow it will come out different. But we are beginning to understand more now about what works for STEM education, and we know that interaction with STEM professionals is critical. I see this myself because I'm a scientist, not at UCR, and I volunteer every week as a coach for the STEM high school science Olympiad team. For events that have a coach like me, or even better, a UCR undergrad or graduate student, the difference is amazing. The kids engage and really learn the material. The problem is we don't have enough STEM volunteers. It's difficult to get UCR students or faculty to walk or drive over to the STEM high school, which is one mile off campus, or North High School, which is a mile and a half off campus, volunteer for an hour, and then walk or drive back to UCR. If the STEM Center is located on the UCR campus, only a short walk through campus will be required for volunteers, and that will greatly increase the ability of undergraduates, graduate students, and faculty to volunteer, say at lunchtime or after school. It's these one-on-one -on -one interactions that make a real difference. We are failing the majority of our kids right now with STEM education. Let's take what we know works, build the STEM Center at UCR, and make it available to more students. My name's Tom Scott. I only want to remark on the adequacy of the document, not taking a side in terms of the quality of the education or anything that might come out of STEM. Uh, first point's been discussed, this the idea that traffic report is inadequate. I think that's fairly obvious. Second is the suggestion of looking at alternatives. The alternatives that have been suggested are are meager at best, and they need to be readdressed, particularly the idea of a distributed system and things like this. Third one's probably a really major one, and that's that um, open space and recreational area. This would constitute probably about a 30% loss of open space area for this for this area of the of the city. <clears throat> that rises above cumulative loss. I think that tips into an actual loss, which means it needs to, be, needs to be taken care of as a mitigation. The EIR addresses this by kind of identifying the expectation that people will go to some other park. Now that pressure that goes to other parks is going to be felt and needs to be addressed so that I think at best the document needs to have some kind of signed agreement between RUSD and city parks that says that basically that this will be done, maybe there's a cost associated with that that will have to be borne. The people who use the other parks would all have to be agreeing with it. Um, another point that isn't addressed is this idea that the university has a remarkable drainage system for floods. However, right now the flood control for this project goes on to Blaine. Anyone who lives in the region knows that this street, Blaine, uh, uh, often floods as a result of Problems associated with heavy rainfalls, one inch of rainfall would produce 11,000 cubic feet of water that has to go out the pipe onto Blaine. And I Hello everyone. My name is put my elbow here. My name is Aram Ira. I'm a double alumnus of UC Riverside, former president for the student government at UCR, and a current university neighbor. So I actually occupy an interesting mix of demographics here. I, I think a major impact of this project that um, gets overlooked is the impact that it will have on UCR students 
themselves. You know, the people who are being charged up to 30,000 a year to attend this institution in the first place. Anyone that has worked in higher education knows that the continuity and institutional knowledge, especially among students, is incredibly hard to preserve. Despite that, the duly elected UCR student government representatives across six different academic years have been fighting this project, and for good reason. They know all it, would, it will do for the majority of UCR students is create increased competition for already limited campus resources. In the wake of massive campus growth, everything from lab and classroom space to on-campus parking to access to resources like the UCR libraries and dining facilities have already been massively impacted with minimal relief in sight. Adding 1,200 students and their respective families into the mix would exacerbate the problem with no clear mitigation efforts presented. A false dichotomy has been created around this project to control the narrative, which says you either support this project proposal and by extension STEM education, or by opposing this project you, you oppose STEM education for all children. Many UCR students support STEM education. Many students want to be good community partners, but not at the cost of their higher education, their access to campus resources, and their ability to utilize the facilities that they and their parents annually pay an exorbitant amount of money for. Thank you. That concludes the speaker cards. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? On behalf of RUSD and UC Riverside, I want to thank all of you for attending tonight's public hearing. Thank you. Is that yours? No. Someone forgot their glasses.